So I consider this the one key thing when it comes to actualizing your desires in an effortless flow based way. As we always discuss here, your attention appears to go in the direction to reveal what has been impressed upon the subconscious mind. Therefore, by acknowledging your results and your progress towards your results in a certain way with gratitude, it allows for more of a effortless flow based journey towards actualizing your results. I also mentioned that I value personal experience. Although it's beneficial to value the personal experiences of others, your way to actualize your vision is actually the best way for you. Valuing personal experiences, which may also keep into consideration the experiences of others, allows you to think for yourself ideally and not be trapped by dogma. Ultimately, to distinguish yourself and allow your authentic self to manifest, personal experience is key. So today we're talking about appreciating your progress, your results, and your personal experiences with gratitude to actualize your vision in an effortless flow based way. Thus, I titled today's conversation mind map, valuing the journey and destination equally. Now, one may have formed beliefs that there are set ways of achievement, be it in physical, family, social, intellectual, spiritual, career, or financial goals. And these beliefs are formed usually from looking around, observing what others are doing, and then mimicking their patterns. And while it can be helpful to not reinvent the wheel in certain regards, there are also infinite ways not yet discovered to actualize a vision. And thus there are many ways that are personally best for you. So I recommend valuing the journey and destination equally. Much of the attention, for example, on an entrepreneur's journey is on the journey. Same is to be said about skill cultivation. If one values the journey as much as they value the destination, Life becomes flow-based and the person becomes autotelic as Mihai Csikszentmihalyi defined the autotelic in the book Flow. He said, the autotelic experience or flow lifts the course of life to a different level. Alienation gives way to involvement, enjoyment replaces boredom, helplessness turns into a feeling of control, and psychic energy works to reinforce the sense of self. So the sense of self reinforced is, as we've been discussing, revealing the true nature of the self as created in the image of the creator, which is love, happiness, fulfillment, and bliss. Now, I've stated many times that entrepreneurship has also been a spiritual journey for me, as it was a catalyst to bring awareness to and release identification to inauthentic beliefs to realize the self, self-realization, and also the true nature of self, which is love, happiness, fulfillment, and bliss, as also articulated by the ancients in the various scriptures of the world, which can be thus experienced with the different aspects of the journey to actualizing the entrepreneurship vision, which once the vision is actualized, another one may be set and the journey continues and never needs to end. And it does not have to be entrepreneurship. It could be any form of creative expression or any path related to spiritual, physical, family, social, intellectual, career, or financial. Anything can be a catalyst. I have friends who are motorcycle enthusiasts, and they consider riding as a spiritual path. Who's to say otherwise? I consider a spiritual journey an individualized one, which may be shared with others while also experienced individually. And to relate to his flow research in his book, he has something similar to say in this passage. He says, Autotelics are those who need few material possessions, and little entertainment, comfort, power, or fame, because so much of what they do is already rewarding. Because such persons experience flow in work, in family life, when interacting with people, when eating, even when alone with nothing to do, they are less dependent on external rewards. They are more autonomous and independent because they cannot be as easily manipulated with threats or rewards from the outside. At the same time, they are more involved with everything around them because they are fully immersed in the current of life. So, how I notice this playing out in my life and in relation to my goals and visions is that although in the earlier stages, it was more about setting goals to achieve external results, 
like certain amounts of income, money saved, buying stuff, etc. I noticed that, as mentioned earlier, most of our life experiences are on the journey to actualizing these goals. So it would make sense then to value the journey with gratitude as well. So goal setting and vision setting, I always do. And as we value the journey to actualizing them equally as the goal, we also drop the excess importance, which facilitates a flow-based actualization of the vision. Excess importance or excess potential in reference to the book Reality Transurfing is where one gives unnecessary mental importance to something resulting in a flow breaker. This is why I always encourage a flow-based journey to actualizing your vision. I'll link to my flow-based life series in the description to facilitate. Also, lack of fulfillment-based beliefs, which result in unnecessary external seeking, I find, generates excess potential. Which is also why I say, accept that what you desire, you already have to abide in fulfillment. That way, your attention automatically remains on what is in harmony with your vision in a lighthearted way. Also, being autotelic, we become less and less identified with material possessions. This does not mean we don't enjoy them. Rather, we do not become overly identified with them. Some of my business clients, for example, I helped them earn six figures a month, some multiple six figures a month. And it was a big shift for them as they did not grow up with this kind of money. So they bought their nice cars, their nice places, and enjoy a wonderful lifestyle. And they all agree that the journey is as valuable as the destination. And although they have these material possessions, they are not identified with them. They love who they are and what they do. And what may have initially started off as muses, a certain kind of lifestyle, etc. On the journey, they realized that the muses inspired them to actualize their true nature of love, happiness, bliss, and fulfillment through and with their creative expression of entrepreneurship. By the way, I mentioned last week, I believe, that I would host some conversations on this channel with them, which they agreed to. So stay tuned for that. And that will be a lot of fun. They can share their inspiring stories. I help them with their subconscious beliefs and business growth techniques and strategies from my many years of business experience. And they did all the work. So we value the journey and the destination. Another reason why I teach this is this way, one remains on the course to actualizing their vision because they enjoyed the journey rather than experiencing meaninglessness or unnecessary suffering along the way. Now let's talk about how. So related to the 2023 vision video from the start of this year, which you're welcome to watch, I'll link in the description to it. As mentioned, I'm also making a 2024 version as well soon. I work with the following when it comes to setting a vision. The Robert Dill's logical levels, which you can see on my screen, and the different areas of my life, which I categorize as physical, spiritual, family, social, intellectual, career, and financial. For more detail and depth in clarifying your vision and harmoniously relating all these areas to your vision and your vision harmoniously to all these areas, I recommend my subconscious mind program, which I'll link to in the description. So to practice gratitude, to be authentic and enjoy the journey of actualizing your visions and life in general, consider the following. Number one, value your results. Number two, value your progress. And number three, value your personal experience. Let's go deeper into this and relate it to the model and the different areas of life. Number one, value your results. So pull up a sheet of paper or create a mind map or use whatever note-taking device and note the different areas of life in this section. Physical, family, social, intellectual, spiritual, career, and financial. And then write down a few or more results you have experienced in these different areas during this year. For example, I'll share a few of mine with you. For spiritual, I wrote that I felt comfortable to share on my channel this year different Bible passages that were very helpful for me. And I received many messages thanking me for doing so and sharing that the commentary around them was helpful. This is significant for me as a number of years ago, I didn't feel comfortable doing so. Even though some of my favorite teachers that I've been discussing over the years, like Neville Goddard, Joseph Murphy, Emmett Fox, and Florence Scovel Shin, quote the Bible regularly in their work. I also discovered BibleHub.com, which allows me to compare the different translations and form connections. For physical, I wrote, 
I feel my stamina and cardio was higher this year in comparison to the previous years. One day in the morning, I did my weight training workout, went for a long run, had a back-to-back -back day of work, and then went snowboarding till 9 p.m., and I didn't feel tired after all of that. So it is very helpful to look back on the year to see how many wonderful results you have experienced on the way to actualizing your visions. If one only focuses on the vision and does not value the results on the journey to actualizing it, they miss the opportunity to impress the subconscious mind with gratitude towards these results. What we are grateful for, we experience more of in its likeness, increasing more so each day on a continuous basis. And you may also reflect upon the Robert Diltz model to inspire these entries if you'd like. For example, reflect upon the different results over the year in your environments, behaviors, and capabilities, which are the new skills acquired or developed further, etc. I'll give some examples in number two. Number two is value your progress. So some visions are ongoing, for example, building your business up to a certain level of success. And so here you can have gratitude to the different areas that relate to it. For example, let's use the DILT model and behavior level. By the way, I did a few discussions lately working with the DILT model. I'll link in the description to them. For behaviors, it could be a new habit. For example, it could be a habit of waking up at a certain time and going to bed a certain time. This might have been a new habit that helped you organize your day better. Now, as you note these, feel the gratitude. Feeling is the secret. Feel the gratitude for the progress you made to impress that feeling on your subconscious mind, to experience more of it in likeness, increasing more so each day on a continuous basis. Perhaps you put in a nice morning routine or you started to drink more water each day. These are worth writing down with gratitude so you can value the journey and progress you have made towards actualizing your vision. So again, make a list of the different areas of life and include a few entries or as many as you'd like for each of them. The goal of this exercise is gratitude and appreciation for yourself and all the great work you do. Then number three, value your personal experience. Here's where you can write down personal experiences in the various areas of life listed here where you learned valuable insights so you can encourage thinking for yourself even more so. Remember, this world that appears is made up of past beliefs, some helpful, others not so much. By thinking for yourself, you can live ideally authentically. For example, I'll share a few. A few years ago for finance, I once had an idea to sit down and create a custom investment calculator that considers calculations that I've never seen in any investment calculator based on my personal investing style, risk tolerance, and other variables that are very important for me for making a decision. So if I'm presented with an investment opportunity, I plug in some numbers and decide accordingly. When you are presented with investment opportunities, it is good to do your own calculations rather than going exclusively by what numbers are presented to you, which may look good on the surface, yet do not consider your important variables for decision making. Another one was in social. I realized it was ideal for me to go out a certain amount of time each week and socialize outside of business initiatives. I experience flow easily while socializing. Now, this might not be true for anyone else, yet personal experience has revealed this to be ideal for me. Another one a number of years ago was intellectual. Some may think that I read and study a lot. Actually, not that much. Much of my time is dedicated to applying this information to my life, like in business or whatever. And a small amount of time actually is based on reading and studying how to optimize what I'm doing. So I found my ideal ratio for studying and applying the information. So in summary, it is key to reflect with gratitude on your results of the year, your progress during the year, and your personal experiences during the year. This impresses your subconscious mind ideally, so you can live ideally authentically to experience more of it in likeness. So I trust you found this video to be helpful. Let's go ahead and conclude this with an auto suggestion to further encourage. You could say, I am as grateful for the journey as I am for the destinations. I experience my inherent bliss, happiness, fulfillment, and love with all that I do and all who I do it with. This awareness increases each day as I remain in my flow to actualize my visions in a fun, joyous, blissful, effortless way. If you would like a copy of this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk with you soon. Take care.